This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're in the San Gabriel Valley today, joined by Elena Satrian. She is the executive director of the Armenian National Committee of America Western Region. And I remember when I was in sixth grade, we were shown the film Anne Frank, and we learned about the Jewish Holocaust, the Jewish genocide. Uh, my daughters are in school now. I, they've had some Jewish Holocaust education. I don't feel as if I had education about the Armenian genocide, or if my daughters have, I don't know about it. A am I missing something? Am I forgetting? Um, well, you're pretty accurate because right. I think until uh, recently, uh, Armenian genocide education hasn't been uh, part of the classrooms. Uh, of course, there were efforts made, you know, going back even a, a decade, right. in in suggesting that Armenian genocide be taught. But what's so interesting? We've talked about this. What did Adolf Hitler say when cooking up the idea for the Jewish Holocaust? Who, after all, remembers the Armenian genocide? Right. And surely enough, that exact quote that um, uh, was mentioned is now actually incorporated into the uh, California state. Uh, curriculum framework. Yeah, and the here's the good studies. news. I mean, we're here because so, there's good news in right. terms of Armenian Genocide Holocaust education. Right. Tell us about it. Um, this is uh, something that we started about two years ago, uh, working very closely with Superintendent Tom Torlikson, mm -hmm. who's been a very good friend and, you know, has a very good understanding of the Armenian California community. State Superintendent. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and working alongside Assemblymember Nazarian, who also spearheaded that. Who represents who significant portions of the San Fernando Valley, right. Hollywood area. Right, so, um, so the ANCA Western Region also uh, launched an education committee that specifically deals with this, that's comprised of you know, uh, past superintendents, teachers, uh, students, and the goal of that committee and our, uh, mm -hmm. one of our priorities was to ensure that uh, the Armenian Genocide is properly taught in public and private schools. This is so surprising to me because Armenians have been part of the fabric of our state. It's got to be at least 50 years in terms of significant numbers. Much longer. Yeah, but, Much longer. but I mean, Fresno, right. large Armenian population, Gr Glendale, large right. Armenian population. I mean, how does I mean, that I happen, live, right? Yeah, I live two doors down from the Soroyans. <laughs> I mean, like, Armenians have been part of our fabric right. for a long and, time. And, well, actually, the, the story of the Armenian genocide is actually a very important part of American history. Yeah, tell us about and that. So, I didn't know this. So, what are you, about to you tell know, us? and this is, this is a part of American history that's been lost. Um, the uh, uh, Near East Relief was the first U.S. congressionally sanctioned humanitarian organization. Its original name was the American Committee for Armenian and Assyrian right. Relief. And let's just remind our viewers, just in case, of the course. Armenian Genocide, we just looked back to 100 years. Right. Uh, last year, uh, 1.5 million Armenians were slaughtered at the hands of the Ottoman Empire. Correct. And continue. Of course. Uh, and to date, uh, mm -hmm. the, the current Turkish Right. government denies that this ever took place right and so uh, one of our main missions and goals has been to uh, obtain proper recognition and resolution to the Armenian genocide um, it's a genocide it was the first genocide of the 20th century right. so you really can't talk about the Holocaust the uh, the term genocide was actually coined because when when referring to the Armenian genocide that's when so we that word came into correct. our, our so, language so to have that that part of history denied for so many years, uh, really for the Armenian community especially. Every single Armenian that is in the United States, whether they've you know, immigrated you know, 100 years ago or they've recently, right. uh, are all descendants. And you had a recent wave with the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Absolutely, right. so you know, I'm personally a product of that. So you were born in Armenia. I was born in Armenia. Uh, we moved uh, to the United States at the, uh, at the end of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Wow. Um, so, um, and my great-grandmother was a genocide survivor who was actually rescued by the Near East Relief, by the American people. In one of the orphanages, and she was one. Of the, she was the only survivor in her in her family. So every single one of us in in, in the states or all over the world uh, are survivors I or wonder, descendants of survivors of the Armenian I genocide. I wonder why the Jewish genocide has received greater recognition. I guess you can say in education. I, I wonder, and I'm a Jewish American, right. so I, I wonder what, what's well, going on Well, I think here. that there's you know, and it's very very unfortunate, right. but because uh, politics has no place in history. Right. Um, but um, just like the 
uh, whole American response to the Armenian genocide has right. kind of been forgotten. Uh, it's been done because of political reasons, and because Turkey to date denies right. it, because that would mean that you know there they you know there would need be need to, need to be reparations, right. and just like Germany, uh, paying reparations. Right. To Jews. But the irony is too, the American response to the Armenian genocide was a real positive one. The American response to the Jewish genocide was, right. they pretended it wasn't happening well, while it was happening. Not just that, but uh. the New York Times covered the Armenian genocide every single day, whereas that was not even you know close to the coverage that the Holocaust right. received. Um, so so, it, yeah, so yeah. it's very interesting because, I mean, um, yes, it was a very uh, dark part of right. uh, world history, mm -hmm. um, but you know when we when we think about um, you know having 132,000 orphans being right. saved and over a million refugees, um, it's a every, spot. every every single state in the United States actually participated in this effort. One of my favorite photographs Please. is um, of a uh, I think it's a mayor uh, that's uh, pretty uh, you know standing in a mm -hmm. in a barrel. Uh, because he's just donated all his clothing to the Armenian Genocide. Mm. And, and on it, it says, you know, uh, the Near East Relief and, and, and a message for others to donate. The Golden Rule Sunday, uh, which is an American tradition, was mm -hmm. based off of the same effort where for years and years, the Ameri American families uh, ate the food that the orphans were eating uh, on Sundays and donated the remains to the Near East Relief. So it's a, it's a very inspiring story and uh, we're, we're thrilled that now it's incorporated into the curriculum framework in California, uh, in California mm -hmm. and we will be you know so we cover 19 states west of the Mississippi and of course we have our eastern region office and our national headquarters uh, the beauty of the ANCA Western Region is that we have local chapters everywhere. Right. We have uh, an Armenian community. Which is um, a lot of places. A lot, including Hawaii and Alaska. I and I just got back from Twin Falls, Idaho mm. and Boise. So we really are everywhere. And, um, you know, unfortunately, so, some parts of it have to do with the Armenian genocide. For example, the Boise, Idaho community uh, are, uh, are an old community that were uh, direct, de direct, direct descendants of... Right. Um, the Armenian genocide, they came here 100 years ago, right. whereas the Twin Falls community is uh, actually um, uh, refugees from uh, the current uh, Baku uh, oh, right. pogroms uh, right. committed by, the, uh, by Azerbaijan. I want to talk about the election, the 2016 yes. American election. We met at the California Democratic Party convention, and I was surprised because I thought, why is the ANCA Western Region here? And you told me, well, we're here, we're at the Republican Convention. Mm -hmm. Why are you, as this organization, becoming involved in electoral politics? Well, we're a grassroots political organization, So, and one of our uh, you know, priorities is to make sure that we have a civically engaged community. Right. Uh, in 2012, we launched a program called High Votes, uh, which is with the sole goal of registering people to vote and making, making sure that they come out and vote in elections. Uh, through that program, we've registered about 25,000 Armenians. Wow. Um, just 10,000 in this, you know, since January. Wow. Um, and that effort is now expanding to not just in California, uh, but also in, in targeted areas throughout the United Do States. Do you know if there are any stats on Armenian voting preferences do you know? I don't know if the Armenian community tends to be more democratic, more republican. We are, we, we are equally split. I see. Okay. Um, and and it really varies uh, which area sure. the Armenians it, come it, from. It, just, like, just like any, just like any other community. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, the Sacramento Bee actually had a a, a, a very nice piece um, about the Armenian um, uh, community's right. power in uh, in the 2016 right. general elections that we can possibly be a determining factor in the race uh, replacing Boxer. Um, so should be uh, interesting. Yes, her name is Elena Satri, and she is the executive director of the Armenian National Committee of America West Region. My name is Brad Pomerantz, Charter Local Edition.